Hello there, it's Ina here, and welcome to my art room. Now, if you are a regular visitor to my channel here, you might remember this journal. I posted a video about it three months ago. Uh, at the time, I had just bought it at a local store. I did some little alterations to it so it would suit me more to be used as an art journal. I also showed you in that video how I decorated the cover, front and back, of course. It has lots of uh, yummy texture. Now, this journal does not only have a chipboard cover, it also has chipboard pages. So, of course, I didn't get as many pages as I would usually get in a normal art journal, but these pages are very sturdy, so they hold up to all kinds of mediums, uh, lots of texture and so on, no problem. And I was also able to work on them from both sides. So altogether I will have 16 art journal pages to show you. Now some of those pages I've covered in videos, but many are brand new. So I really hope you will enjoy this little flip through. Now, as I was working in this journal, I realized that the hinge from these jump rings uh, likes to move into the middle of the journal and sometimes the pages get snagged on it a little bit because the hinge is a bit bigger than the ring. It's also a little rough. So I added these pony beads to each one of them, one on each side of the hinge, and that really solves the problem because now it cannot move anymore into the inside of the book. And I thought this might just be a helpful tip to to any of you who also use jump rings in one of your journals. So let's just get started. As I said, some of these pages have been covered in videos and I will let you know which ones there are. Now this is of course the inside of the front cover and I decorated it right in the very beginning just by adding some craft paper. Now in hindsight I could have just left this free and used it as an additional journal page but maybe next time because I actually found another journal like this and I will start another one sometime in the future. Now the pages in here are not in chronological order the way I made them. I rearranged them when I was done with them all and that's the beauty of working in a loose leaf journal. You can always change things around a little bit. So my first page was a bonsai tree. This is covered in a video and this has a lot of texture. I used rope for the tree trunk, I used shredded paper for the leaves, embossed paper here and texture paste. And again the reason this was possible was because of the sturdy substrate. So I really enjoyed making this page. I added just a simple word bonsai to it. I also did some outlining around the tree and on the edges of the page. The dragonfly page here was also covered in one of my videos. It started with bits and pieces of paper napkin. I did some painting, I did a lot of detailing, some stenciling and I added the little quote, what seems ordinary is often the extraordinary. Now this is a new page. It started with a white gesso circle on a black gesso background. I colored the circle using my glimmer mist, my coffee spray and the sparkle pen. And then I proceeded to cut out some different bits and pieces from different books. So I had different fonts just for the base here. And I did the same for the figures. These were cut out and have very large font and there is some shading done with my charcoal pencil and I also added some splatter with white acrylic paint just to the black background and a little phrase it's a big world. Next a little abstract I used lots and lots of acrylic paint so it has great texture I did some splatter in green the white is done with my fan brush the background was done with pastel colors and a sponge. I added the black border and I even added a word, uh, buckle up. I chose this one because I think this gives the illusion of movement. So I thought it was fitting. 
And here is my page about Marlene Dietrich. I had this Xerox image of her and so I did a collage page with her and bits and pieces of craft paper. Lots of outlining, lots of highlighting, a fancy border and I also did a lot of embossing. This was just the time I finally got some embossing powder and a heat gun so I had to play with it. So here is Malena's page and this was covered in the video. And so was this page. Here I started with a magazine image and some book pages. I added these plastic bread ties to it for extra texture. I used my primary pigment powders which are very bright for all the drippage. And of course there is more coloration going on, stenciling and so on. Now this was covered in a video and it says keep looking right here. This is a new page. I started with a teal and copper background with acrylic paints. I used these images from magazines and I used some strips of silk paper in teal and white. And they are the ones who cover up half of this figure and are also underneath this part. Gives some great texture and very subtle interesting look. I did some stenciling. I created the circle so he had a good place to be and so it kind of complemented each other. And a little bit of liquid pearls on the letters and here and on his clothing. And then I added the word showtime. These are huge letter stamps and I hardly ever use them but I thought they look great on here. This is again a page I covered in a video. I started with a very colorful background, added black paint, took some of it back off using a baby wipe, painted a flower, gave it some special interest by adding uh, crackle glaze and some dots and that's pretty much it. Uh, I called it, it consoles the spirit. And another little bit abstract page. Here I started with a piece of craft paper. It had all these words printed on it like achieve, success and so on. I distressed it by using my brayer and some gesso and also some acrylic paints in earthy colors. And then I did a little abstract painting using my palette knife, a little splatter. And at the end I added these uh, letters. These are rather 3D and they are embossed. And I spelled out the word just be. And a little metallic rub brought out the texture on these. Some outlining and that was that page. This is also not covered in the video. It started by me really liking these <laughs> kernels, they are corn kernels, but they came in these amazing colors. So I made a very simple background with my sprays, added the kernels, they have outlining, they have some sparkle pen on it, and then I had these paintbrushes which were printed on rough linen fabric. So I cut them out, glued them down, I also found this word it says seeker and it's also printed on uh, linen. And then I proceeded to just do some handwriting, not necessarily to be read, but just for decoration. It goes all across the page and on top of these images. I also added some of the fiber from the linen fabric and that's it for this page. And here I did a makeover of an old page uh, which didn't turn out. It started with the big letters spelling out fun. There again the embossed letters just in really big size. And then I added some feathers I made from old book pages. Lots of detailing. There is real string, real little um, pearls here. I added some rusty to the edges. A lot of drippage and so on. And I have a video on this one so you can look up all the details. Next is my picture with the koi. I used some recycled materials. These are pieces from packaging. And so is this and so is the cellophane. It has a little magazine image of koi fish here underneath it. And the plastic makes it look like it's in water. I made a colorful background. I believe gelatos I used, some 
stenciling. I cut out the letters from magazine paper and then uh, drew and painted the little koi fish here. A little bit of stamping, a little bit of distressing and this is covered in a video. And again a bit of an abstract painting, this time's figures. I use just a brush and different acrylic paints. The background is done first with um, watered down acrylic paint and a little stenciling here for the white. Then I created these images and then used a sponge to, or a base for them to uh, land on. And then I added the black figure. Now the whole page has some texture to it as I made some lines in my gesso um, right in the very beginning and it left a nice texture all across the page here. Then I added the word infinity down here. This was cut from a magazine. Some splatter too. Everywhere. There we go. And this is a very simple collage page. I used two main images, the mountains and the two dancers here. They came from completely different magazines, but the colors just matched so nicely. So I created the background, added the images, I ripped them out. I used my ink pads to do some shading and blending. I did some stenciling here too uh, with the white color and I also added extra dots with my Posca pen. I added the word together and this was sanded down a little bit so it didn't look too shiny. So here is that page. And here again I altered the uh, magazine image, uh, this guy with the tall lady. I added the frame and then blackened out everything what was outside the frame. Created a um, fun background with my palette knife, a little bit of stamping, added the word priorities and that's pretty much it. And there's a video on this page available as well. And that brings me to the last page here I played with my gelatos which I had just bought and uh, that's pretty much it. There is a little magazine image of the eye and I did add glossy accent to the eye which kind of ran down here. I don't know if you can see it in this light. Yep, a little bit. I really like the colors on here. I named it Inspired Mess as it was really uh, just a page for me to play and have fun. And here again is the uh, end of the journal. It has a little sign. It says the end. And that was my flip through. Not too long, not too many pages, but I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found these pages interesting. Thank you so much for coming and joining me. See you really soon again. Bye bye for now.